Hello everybody, welcome to another update on the stock screen. Today we're going to talk about the candy store again. But first a caveat, we have a recession and stocks could have a lot of downside risk. So the best place to be is still the US dollar. However, if you still want to buy some stocks, then we can try to invest in the best of the best companies. So let's go over the candy store and start with Birchcliff Energy. So this is a new holding. Um, basically, this just follows the natural gas price in the US. And natural gas has been coming down a bit, but I expect that this will rise again at some point when Freeport uh, gets back up and also when Chenier Energy can export it again. So let's go to Birchcliff here. As you know, there were some problems with the Sabine Pass export and Freeport, but once these two are resolved, they can export natural gas again. And then I expect that natural gas will rise again. So the valuation is still undervalued. So this is the market cap, 2.5 billion CAD. And I value it at almost double because the PE ratio is really low, around three to four. So it should have upside. And when natural gas goes up again then i expect a bounce so this is our natural gas play they will pay down debt by the end of the year and next year we will see huge dividends next one is sigma lithium this one has been a very good performer has almost uh, tenfolded yeah, it has tenfolded in two years i expect this to go higher and why do we invest in sigma lithium i well, just wanted to show you one thing so this was a chart from last year 2021 they expected that china ev sales were going to be 3 million in 2022, that's this year. That would equal a 15% penetration rate. Instead, this year, we are having 7 million in sales per year. So 600,000 times 12 is 7 million. So instead of this number, we already have this number. So this is 7 million and that equals a penetration rate of more than 30%. So they expect that this number in 2025 is now going to 2022. So it's a double the expectation of last year. So you can see that there's huge growth in sales in China and this is going to increase a lot okay i think by next year in two years we should already be at 50 percent penetration rate much faster than they forecasted so that's also why lithium is rising let's take a look at sigma lithium we are currently at 2.5 billion and there's plenty of upside okay plenty of upside it will probably go up based on our valuations and this is only at 5000 spot mean we are currently at 7000 in the latest auction so that is our second candy next one is scorpio tankers scorpio tankers yeah I'm just buying this uh, because I think tankers are in a bull market. 
Um, there is a video on that. You can go watch it. Um, so basically, we are seeing huge demolitions. We are seeing higher ton miles uh, demand for tankers. So I expect that this will continue to rise and the PE ratio is around 3 right now. So it's it's a good buy. So they have earnings. And apparently they are also repurchasing their own shares. So looks good. I expect this to rise in the coming years. Let's see how that goes. Next one is Frontera Energy and I sold this one because I think Colombia has some problems with the taxes there. So I just exchanged this one for Birch Cliff. So this one can be deleted. And then we still have this one. GCM Mining. Um, GCM Mining we sold as well. Not that it's a bad company, but I knew that gold was going to come down and it has come down. I'm waiting for a bottom to get back in. A COT report is looking good, but yeah, the strong dollar is still putting pressure on gold. So I'm trying to find the bottom here. Uh, the gold forecaster index can help us. But uh, let's take a look at the valuation. So market cap 330 million. There's not a lot of upsides from Segovia alone, but after 2024, we should see two projects come online. Now they are going to send out a new feasibility study with new CAPEX. Uh, increases probably and that could actually decrease the valuations so prepare for that if you are invested in this company there could be capex overhangs and that could uh, have an effect on the stock price as well so i'm out of grand colombia looking to get back in when gold bottoms out and after they have released the new capex uh, requirements. So this can be deleted. And we are going to go to the next one, which is Verde Agritech. This has been a very bad performer. Um, sold some of it here. Um, the reason is I see better opportunities in Sigma Lithium and Trillion Energy. But I still hold a substantial amount of this because I still believe in the growth outlook. So the valuations currently 170 million market cap. Potash price has declined and that's the main problem for this company. So this is the potash price. It went up and now it's already somewhere here at $750 per ton. I don't know where it will end. It could go lower. Not sure. Um, but I think that food prices will go up next year. Oil and gas should stay high, but we have a recession, of course. So that could add some weakness. Inflation is coming down, but it's not coming down that fast. Uh, we're still at 8%, could go to 6% or 5%. So it should bottom out here somewhere. I don't know where, but Brazil is now in the summer season, so there should be demand for potash. So depending on where the potash price goes, our valuations will change, of course. And currently, those valuations are fair value for this year. You can see that the green line is at the blue line. But for next year, when they can go to 2 million 
tons per year. We will see if they can reach it because the market doesn't believe that they can go to 2 million. But if they can go to 2 million, then we should be going to around 500. 500 million should be doable, 400 to 500, but still at double from current uh, market cap for next year. So I still expect a double for next year if potash stays at this level. I don't know what potash is going to do. Okay, In a recession, everything can happen. But of course, in the ultimate long run, this is just going to keep on growing. So 2 million will go to 4 million, 5 million eventually go to 10 million, and then we will still have a company which is worth billions. So if you wait long enough, two years, three years, this will go up. You just need to have the patience. I know they have delayed that growth by one year. They don't have the permits yet. So we wait uh, a year longer. I will be back in, let's say, next year. Okay. Still holds a tiny bit of this. So I'm not deleting further. Next one is Trillion Energy, a new holding. This has been doing very well. It's up and probably going to break out. So this is a play on European natural gas. And we know that European natural gas is going to go up. It's just going to go higher because they are dependent on LNG from the US and capacity is there already at 100%. So this can only go higher. That's the natural gas price in Europe. It has come down a bit, but it will probably stay very high, at least above the, the 100 level here. Um, we also had some news on Trillion Energy lately. So they are now already drilling the first well. And there was some good news about them using the 850 meters existing borehole. So they don't need to drill this anymore. Um, so instead of uh, drilling three kilometers, they now need to only drill two kilometers. So that's less costs and faster production. So I like that. They are shortening the timelines and that should be very good. Uh, valuations are still a triple to a quadruple based on uh, the prices. So currently they use $30 per MCF natural gas, but I think this will go to 40 uh, by next week. So if you use, um, yeah, let's say, 35, then we should have an NPV before tax of 1.2. Um, so after tax, probably a billion dollar company in a few years, just two to three years. That's very good because the market cap is only somewhere at 150 fully diluted. So can be an easy four or five fold if you wait two years. So that's where I am. I also know that European gas is not going to come down in the next two years, at least not significantly. So we are set for this. They just need to execute. And then we will see multiples higher. So this can go like this. Risk is, of course, that they don't execute and then it can go to zero. But let's hope that this doesn't happen. Next candy is Santa Cruz Silver, and that is actually one that I deleted. So I was bullish on this, but after the earnings that they released, something uh, has changed. So let's see what has changed. I was not too happy about the earnings. 
So this was before the earnings and then after the earnings, it collapsed because the AISC has gone up from 17 to almost 20. I don't like to see that. So um, let's take a look at the valuations. So this is actually also another concern that I have. Not sure what is happening here. But so the copper warehouse levels, I will show another chart on that. Copper warehouse levels have actually and go to the copper checklist here and then you go to copper warehouse levels you can actually see that the warehouse levels are not decreasing anymore so they are almost starting to increase that means there is not a lot of demand for copper so you can see the weakness already here and if copper goes down then zinc is probably also going down you can see that here um, zinc has dropped still undervalued but this can uh, go down very fast let's say it goes to 1.2 then you can see that the valuations can change very rapidly so we are in a recession and demand is not that high for zinc so that's why I'm out of this. It also has a lot of debt. And to pay off that debt, we need high prices for zinc. And that's not the case. So, yep, this has been deleted. Let's delete it. Costs are up. I don't like to see that. Next one is Relic Hell. I bought this back because it seems that it's it's bottoming out this seems like a pretty nice bottom something like like here and here so this could be a new bottom uh, let's go to the valuations The reason I bought this is because one of the reasons is that CEO has bought a lot of shares. So there is insider buying very recently from August to September. I also see that the contracts keep rising and this is one big contract here. Currently the onboarded patients are very low, so it's not uh, the estimate right now, but uh, CEO said that the estimated onboarded patients should rise like this. So this gray dot should be going up. We are already in October now. So by the end of the year, we should see 100,000 patients. If you do a quick calculation, 100,000 times $50 per patient times 12 months, then we have 60 million. Yeah, 60 million revenue. And EBITDA should be 40% of that is 24 million EBITDA. So the price to EBITDA is 100 divided by uh, 24 so that's uh, about four it's very cheap for such company a SaaS company and that's just this dot four times EBITDA and we are going to double that by June next year so this is also uh, an estimate that we got from a press release and that would double so the price to EBITDA could go to two which is very cheap so I bought back seems to have bottomed out let's see if they can actually 
hit their targets this time. I'm eager to see if they can hit that. So this is new addition. Also very important, they are paid in US dollars. So if the US dollar keeps rising, as it is doing right now, then Relic will have higher earnings because they are paid in dollars per patient, $50 per month. So this is actually also a play on US dollar strength. Next one, good fellow. I did a video on that, so you can just watch that. It has done very well, even during the market crash, it's still green. I noticed one thing about Goodfellow when I looked at their website. Apparently in August the 4th, they had a new Hundiger installed and it will augment its wood processing capabilities. Let's watch that video. Okay, I have another. Okay, so not sure how much revenue that will add, but it looks great. And I have also seen great reviews on this product. So valuations are actually cheap. You can see here, margins are increasing. Housing starts are up. Okay, we could see problems in uh, that market because of high mortgage rates, I know. So this could go down, but if the recession is over, this, this should move back up. So this trend is probably going to keep on increasing. PE of three, very cheap, and price to book value half. So I think this is a good uh, risk return ratio. Next one, Cerrado Gold. I said I sold all the gold miners. I knew that gold would go down. This one is also sold. Actually, it, I sold it way back here because they had a very bad second quarter earnings release. AISC was 1,400 and they had a net loss. So I sold immediately when I saw that. Um, we are not going to uh, invest in companies that have net losses and high AISC. I thought that they would have at least 1,200 AISC, but it was much higher. So it was sold. Let's take a look at the valuations. So gold price is now already 166. So 
it has gone down. There's a lot of upside left in a few years, but they need to execute, of course. Um, the upside comes from their project in Brazil, but we are waiting for a lot of permits, feasibility studies. So there's a lot of risk here. So I'm out of this. Also waiting for a bottom in gold, so I'm not in gold miners anymore. That also means that Galani Gold has been sold. And I sold this one because their production didn't go up. That's, that's the main problem that I have with Galani Gold. They are not uh, hitting their targets. So this was the main reason. Production should go up to this level that's what they promised and they didn't deliver so this number is lower so that's why i sold this in theory there is still a lot of upside only in theory so a double should be possible by next year but in practice they aren't hitting their targets. So that's why I sold Kalani Gold and go in other companies. So this is the new candy store. All very good companies. Also very important to notice, most of these have no debt. So in an increasing interest rate environment you do not want to have companies with too much debt this one will pay off debt by the end of the year this one has no debt is cashed up for production okay scorpio tankers has a lot of debt but tankers are in the bull market and they have a pe of three so they can pay off that debt verde has no debt trillion energy has no debt and cash flow is coming in in one month, probably already in half a month because they have accelerated the timelines. Relic Health has no debt, and probably cash flow will be coming in soon with those patients that get onboarded. Goodfellow has actually no debt, but has a lot of inventory, but no debt and good cash flow coming in. Margins are pretty low, but okay, they are increasing. So that's the update. And as always, do your own due diligence and I'll see you in the next video, bye.